Hello everyone, this is Dan from ED Films, back from a pretty long hiatus of tutorial making. First off, I want to thank everyone for their continued support of our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Basically what I want to do is jump right into the middle of a project I'm working on right now with a character from Robin McKenna's Crow film that we've been developing and some of the things I've already been dealing with and managing to try to make this character work. One thing I've never really touched on is dealing with foreshortening, which I've only been playing with recently on a couple of projects. I'm just going to isolate this character out. What I have is I have an arm and a hand, and it's just a basic Duic Tool IK setup. So if we just take a look here, we've got the hand, it's moving. It's just essentially of one arm. The arm is just one big piece and then a hand attached to it. And then I'm just using IK. I'm using Duic uh, 14, version 14, which has a great like stretchy, tool. They also have a whole lot of extra controls in here. I created this little foreshortening tool. It doesn't do much because you actually run into a problem fairly quickly with it because I've had to apply stiffening into the puppet tool here to actually make it so that the when the arm is bending, it's not warping all over the place. I'll show you what the actual arm looks like without any of the stiffness on the forearm here. So if we take a look, let's just take a look at the arm. I'm just going to check out the starching. So I've got some starching on the forearm. I'd left the elbow open and then some starching up on the bicep. And this is just to, so that I can create a stronger arm. Without this, let's just turn the amount to zero. And I'm just turning it off on the forearm. You can see the forearm turns to rubber, which might be desirable depending on the character, but for what we're doing, it's not very useful. With the, the actual starching set to zero, the foreshortening has a totally different effect and you can kind of create this this tentacle thing that's going on which which is actually pretty cool you, you still have to control the ik from here but you still you get a little bit of a foreshortening great thing so it can be pretty great if you're making a tentacle creature but for me i need it to be fairly stiff because this character is human the one problem i ran into is that the the stiffness doesn't allow you to create much of much foreshortening before it breaks. The other problem with this technique is that I tried to create an expression that dropped the amount, the percent amount, as the foreshortening was increased. But for some reason, these properties do not play well with expressions. You can keyframe them and they work okay, but you cannot put expressions on them. They do not function well. So you have to find a happy medium. Like if you were to put your starch to one, for instance, and you know the arm looks great, it's nice and solid, but if I try to do the, the foreshortening, I don't really have very far to go because it's really stiff. I'm gonna break it pretty quick. All I have is the lenience in between the starch space here. So if we take a look, these areas that don't have any starch on them are actually squashing together as I compress that arm. So that gives me my only lenience. This is very solid. If I drop this amount to a 0 0.1 or even a 0 0.2, you can see that I get this the bend in it, but I have a little more room to push it around. So you kind of you can kind of play with it to get get what you're looking for, but um, you have to kind of play around and see see what you're willing to lose for this particular type of character. So let's just go back to these controls here. And so you can see I have a little bit, a little bit of room to play with. Now this, again, this is super, this can be really handy because I can do, even the, for a character that's this realistic, even just a little bit of foreshortening can be, can be very effective in, in creating a bit of an extra animation and having the character feel that much more uh, dimensional and alive. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Uh, the way it really works well is if you actually have segmented arms. So if, if for instance, this was a this was a bare arm, like forearm, but I had a sleeve, and then the on the upper arm it was a separate piece, then you can really get some decent foreshortening. I'll show you the whole process to set up this foreshortening by creating um, some really quick solids. Actually, I already made them earlier, so I'm just going to pull them into the comp. So we have this solid here. Let's use, I have this red solid here. That's going to be one of our arms. And then I have this blue solid. And this will be our hand, this will be our forearm, and this will be our upper arm. And let's just quickly go through the process of creating a segmented arm in Duic Tools, but more using the puppet tool, because what we want to do is actually take the power of the puppet tool and use it to create a foreshortening forearm. I do not know how to do foreshortening of the actual humerus, I think it's called. 
because there the, the amount of code attached to, to this joint that appears at the elbow is significant. So if we take a look here, all I'm really doing with the foreshortening slider is manipulating the positioning of the wrist joint. But if you look at the elbow joint, like let's take a, a look at the code on the position of the wrist joint. There's very little to it. This is the code that I added, but the original code is very basic, as you'll see in the example. But if you look at the elbow, the code on the elbow is ridiculous. It goes on and on and on and on. I just, I don't know how to play with this stuff. There's a whole bunch of crazy things going on in there and I am not skilled enough to mess with that. So the only place I can get foreshortening currently is in the forearm and I'm just trying to keep things easy here or as manageable as possible. Let's do this really quickly. I'm gonna grab some tools here. Let's get the puppet pin and we're going to do a shoulder and an elbow. And then we'll do on here, we'll do another elbow and a wrist. And then we're not going to do any bones for the actual hand because there's no deformations that are going to be happening there. So now what I'm going to do is, I guess I can turn this on. Uh, we don't really need to worry about this. I'm going to use Duic Tools Bone Tool to actually create the joints. So I'm gonna go bone. And as soon as I click that, it actually creates two null objects for me, which can now be pulled around to actually manipulate the positioning of the puppet pin. Very, very handy. So I'm just gonna call this shoulder. Oh, let's call it actually shoulder pin. Shoulder pin, elbow pin, and then let's do the forearm. So you have to have the object selected in order for the bones to be created. If you only have one puppet pin selected, it's only going to create a bone for the pin. So we have, this is the uh, elbow pin two, and this is the wrist pin. Okay, wrist pin. So what I want to do now is I also want to get rid of, I have two elbow pins. We don't want to have two elbow pins because if we have two of them, that means we can't create a nice IK chain for this arm. So what we want to do is we want this, the green solid, we want the elbow pin two to actually be driven by the original elbow pin here. So let's order these. So we have shoulder, elbow, wrist, and this one we want to get rid of. So in the lime green, We'll open up the puppet tool. I'm just pressing U. And I believe it is the first puppet pin. There we go, that's the elbow. And I just wanna change what it's referencing to. So right now it's looking at elbow pin two and we want it to look at elbow pin. So let's just delete this here because we named everything so nicely. It should automatically work. There's a bit of a shift. It, you know, you want to like, if we weren't doing this so sloppily, we would have placed the bones right on top of each other. It doesn't really matter for these purposes, but something to think about in your own project. Let's get rid of elbow pin two. Okay, so now we have a nice singular elbow driving this character, this arm. So now we can do is let's create our controller from the wrist pin. I'm going to create a controller and that will be my IK driver. So let's go wrist, elbow, shoulder, and wrist pin. So I just control selected those. Let's create IK. Okay. Oh, oh right. Nothing's parented. Let's undo that. We've got to make sure we parent everything. So the wrist is parented to the elbow and the elbow, elbow to the shoulder. So let's try this again. This may not work. Sometimes when I do this and it doesn't work properly, I get an error. Okay, let's make sure this worked okay. Okay, there we go. Now let's parent the actual hand here. I'm going to position this here and we'll just parent the hand to the wrist. Now the wrist should have a goal enabled. You can actually turn that off. I think if you turn this off, the there, the hand will just follow straight or do this and it'll, it'll have a goal enabled. So it's actually nice. There's some really great options in here. So, and the stretch is working, which I think is a fantastic feature. Okay. So now if we want to create some foreshortening, it's it's just a cheat. It's nothing really special. I'm going to create a new slider here. Um, you could use whatever you want. There we go. And I'm just going to call this FS for short for foreshortening. And then we're going to go into the wrist pin and grab its position. And here you go. You see this little piece of code. This is the code that's actually referencing something that Duic Tools creates. We do not want to delete this in any way. We want to use this in our equation. So what I'm gonna do is create two variables using this equation. Position X 
and I want this to grab the IK0 elbow pin, but the X value. So to do that, I put these brackets and a zero, and then position Y, which will essentially be exactly the same thing, except for one important thing that we're grabbing the Y value from it. And then the next thing we do is position X comma position Y. And this just applies those variables to the X and Y value of this wrist pin position. So now what I can do is make one more variable. We'll define another variable. And that will be the foreshortening variable. I'm just going to put it at zero for a moment because I need to open my controller so that it's visible. I'm not really good at remembering the name of everything. So it's easier just to do a pick whip here. I can grab the foreshortening and bring it over to the slider. OK, so now what we need to do is just add this to the Y value. I don't want to affect the X value because that's just going to move the hand back and forth. I want to affect the Y value. So let's just go plus FS and see what happens. Let's go into our controller and slide it around. And as you can see, it's actually stretching the forearm. Now, it doesn't change the position of our IK, and we don't want it to because I, like, if you get into that, it's just a whole messy thing. This is just to give you some value added to your character animation. So if your character's running, it just gives you the option to create a little bit of a depth to that. The other thing you can play with if you really want to is have this slider attached to maybe the, the scale of the hand. So let's, uh, let's just do that really quick too. So let's take the scale. We're going to use the same kind of thing here because this is two dimensional. Scale X is equal to this guy there and scale Y is equal to, let's pick whip the scale Y. This just keeps the coding easy and then create this scale X comma scale Y. I'm going to keep this super dirty, super simple. Let's just take this FS here and we'll add it here. Now, the only thing I want to make sure is that my relationship for my FS, if I'm pulling it positive, so the arm's getting longer. So in actuality, if an arm rotates towards the screen, it should get shorter. It should appear shorter. Therefore, the hand should be getting bigger because it's actually coming at the screen. So we want to just reverse that relationship. It's no problem. All we can do, all we do is we just go plus, and we're going to go FS. And it's probably going to be, oops, I need a bracket there, plus FS. And then we can just we can make it negative times negative one or whatever. We're, we are going to have to create a value there that reduces it, reduces its effect because it's going to be too extreme times negative one. This will just show you that it's actually working or not. Oh, there we go. What am I doing? Plus, there we go. Okay. So now when FS is actually applied, you can see the this is not desirable, obviously, to the scale that we're doing. So we can go times 0.1. Point one. Okay, so now if we bring the arm up, it gets bigger. If we bring the arm away, it gets smaller. It's a little bit of a cheat. It's just a bit sloppy. You can create an if statement so that if it's over a certain value, the hand's not going to shrink, or that you can't even bring the slider anyway. It's This is just an example. You can extrapolate this on this as you wish, but it gives you a little bit of foreshortening. So what we can do now is we can create just some animation on this wrist here. So let's grab this guy up here. We're just going to, going to shift P to get the position. And I'm just going to create a quick sweep across the screen of this arm. So I'm going to go up here. And we're going to bring it all the way across. So if you were to imagine this character swinging their arm towards the screen. Now what I'll do is I want to add, I want to bring this arc down here because we're going to be doing foreshortening to shorten that. So right now, this is normally what you would have to do to get this arm to swing across. So now what we can do is we can enable a bit of foreshortening, and then as the arm is here, we can shorten this length up, and the arm gets the hand seems to get bigger. And then once it comes back here into full position, we put this down to zero. And we can put an ease on these things here. Well, let's put an ease here, and here, here, and here. All right, so now what we have is we have a little bit of a foreshortening appearing to happen. Uh, we can change this curve a little bit. This is not the best animation, obviously, but what we start to see, I think, is you, you, you see the potential that you can have of actually making this look really, you know, just a lot better. So you have some foreshortening. It's just going to operate like, again, It's I only know how to do the forearm. It actually works pretty well. I've used it a few times. Works pretty well. Let's change this arc a little bit. Let's bring this arm further out. So you get a little bit more dimension in this character. It's not the best looking at the moment, but 
with a little bit of tweaking, it would look pretty good. So there you go. So that's just a basic example. So now we can just sort of look at that arm. It's swinging closer, it's getting shorter, and then over here. So also with this, this effect in mind too, is maybe you would want your forearm over top of your forearm over top here. So now we've just got this run, and then the arm's cutting across and getting long again. So it's a little bit of foreshortening. You can mix this also with some deformers and things like that to take it to the next level. But really, for a fast move, really just want to get be able to have that capacity to make the arm get shorter. Since we are talking about foreshortening, I thought I'd give you a quick sneak peek at a character I am working on that's in After Effects that uses this maybe a, a little more clearly than the example I just showed you. Now, the one thing with this character is I did it in Duic Tools prior to the 14 release, and I did find that something different happened with the foreshortening. Even though I did apply the same technique, I actually got a slightly different result. Was the 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 hand the arm would shorten, but the hand would stay where it was. And in Duic Tools previous to 14, when you created a an IK chain, you would get a wrist goal object. You don't get that anymore. That's actually part of the code. And I don't know if that has anything to do with what's happening here, but in this in this older version, and maybe you guys, someone can tell me what's going on because I'm not sure, but in this older version when I did the foreshortening, I could shorten the arm. You can see how it's pretty effective, actually. I mean, it, does, it looks a little weird because the, arm, the hand isn't changing, but you could have your character lock and grab onto something and that, that arm can foreshorten. And because the arm is a bit furry and because I didn't have to use any stiffening to, to make solidify the arm, I actually get a really, really great result here. Uh, the other thing I have on this character, and again, this is just a little bit of a sneak peek at what we're doing and a tutorial series I'm working on right now for you, is I have a little bit of this, this rotation thing. I can kind of cheat a bit of a rotation so if you if you combine this movement of the foreshortening, so let's just take that to zero. I'll just add some quick keyframes just, just for the sake of an example here of how this could work for you. So let's uh, we'll turn the keyframing on to that, both these ones. I'm just press U, and we'll get some foreshortening and hand rotation all happening at once. We'll do it in one second. There we go. So let's increase the, or decrease the foreshortening in this case. I have it in a minus. I, you know, you could have that could be fixed, and then then decrease this as well, and then also take. Let's take its position and pull its position back a little bit this way, and what should happen is we'll get this nice effect of the arm rotating. It's it's not perfect by any means, but I think that's the goal. You know, it's something you need to embrace with this kind of character animation. Is it's the limitations that give it its style. And that is more the goal than creating anything that's really 3D. But uh, I think it's breaking a little bit because we're actually having the thumb depart from the wrist here. So we've gone a little bit too far in the rotation. Let's go negative 30. Oops. Let's go there. This one's actually a very, fairly complicated model. There's a lot going on in it. But you can see how the foreshortening can work to create a little more depth and something that's, that's not so conventional. And the fur is really nice because it hides it hides a lot of what's going on. But even this limited amount of foreshortening just adds something extra to this, this cutout character that is, is in, incredibly limited in many ways. Anyways, I'm really excited about this guy. I think he's it's it's a pretty neat little character, and there's some really cool things happening with its mouth and everything. But for now, we're just talking about foreshortening, and I just wanted to demonstrate that a little bit and show it in action so you can see how we're getting that sense of dimension with these basic concepts applied. I hope that was helpful for some of you. If you guys have any ideas how to do that better or what might be a, a different way to approach the same problem, share it in the comments section below. We're always interested in learning new things here. And it's only one way of achieving a solution for a problem that I think a lot of us have had or are having on our current projects.